You know what? This world seems to be imploding around us. We read in scriptures where Jesus told us some of the signs that would happen prior to the rapture of the church. And what we're seeing in these signs are a convergence of signs all coming together all at the same time, it seems like. Today, that's what we're going to talk about. Stay with us. And welcome to this week's edition of Living Hope Today. So glad to have you along with us. We're glad that you've tuned in. We welcome all of our viewers from no matter where you're watching, uh, whether it's here in North America or across the seas, we are honored to have you with us as a part of our broadcast this week and enjoying it. Um, You know, it seems like this is going so fast. We are already over halfway of the month of January in this new year, finished already. And uh, it, time is just moving along. So I'll tell you what, if you're a brand new viewer to our program and to our network, I want to encourage you to do something, is to contact us. Let us know where you're watching us from. Uh, you know, uh, whether you're here in North America or uh, in Europe or, or in the Asia area, uh, South America, we get viewers from just about every place, uh, the Philippines and so on. I want to hear from you. Let us know that you're out there, that you're watching, and especially if you're a new viewer. If you're a first-time viewer or if you're new to our broadcast, I hope that you'll stay tuned and uh, watch the broadcast, but we would love to know uh, where you're watching us from. Now, you might be watching us on Facebook, which was our original platform, but we also have YouTube. YouTube is another platform that we have that uh, uh, we broadcast on. And uh, brought and we only just started it just uh, last uh, month or so, and so it hasn't built up. We haven't really done very much with uh, YouTube, but we're hoping that it will build a little bit more. And if you want to watch better programming, I mean, I would say not programming, but better resolution. It's shot over there in full and displays in full HD if you have your settings on that for YouTube. So I hope that you'll that you'll uh, do that and and let us know. And then we want to hear from you, like I said. Here's a way that you can do that. You can connect with us this way, our email address, or you can write us right there at that address, Post Office Box 21131 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73156. That is where we are based out of, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in the middle of Indian country, where we have the most tribes of any state in the Union of the United States. We have more tribes in this state than any place. So we kind of call it Indian America. And uh, so let, let us hear from you. Those are the good ways to get in contact with us and let us know that you are watching our program. Now, this week's broadcast, we mentioned last week just briefly, and I want to just talk about it real briefly because we got a, we've got some, a lot of information to give you today. But today's broadcast, we're talking about the theme, Convergence. Convergence means that it's an event or something that happens all at the same time. It's all at once. It's showing up. Well, one of the things that we definitely know are the signs that Jesus gave to us in God's Word about the time right before he would come in the rapture, prior to the tribulation. And uh, what we are seeing in our world today, all the turmoil that's going on, Uh, We are seeing this, and it is happening faster and faster with more intensity And uh, as we go on. So it's a real convergence of signs of the times that the Lord had given to us. He didn't give us a date. He didn't tell us the day or nor the hour, and uh, we don't know that. But we can tell that we are getting close, that we are in that season, that season meaning it could happen at any time. And I believe it's 2023 is going to be an interesting year if we make it through this year. (laughs) I really believe the Lord's coming soon. And uh, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. And I invite you to stay tuned. If you're tuning in right now and you're watching this, I encourage you to make sure you hit the share button and think of some folks on your your Facebook channel or on your YouTube channel that 
would benefit to watch this. And uh, on Facebook, you can save this. You can also save it in the uh, YouTube and, and watch it anytime. So I encourage you to do that. This is a broadcast they're going to want to see because we are talking about the end time. So I hope you'll stay with us. But before we get too much further, let's get going with a song. And we're going to have music today back to back by my family, the Antoninian family. And th they've got a song right now that I've always loved. It's an old uh, collection of songs that were put together that our, our original Claus Indian family used to sing my mom's family. And uh, our family took it up and started singing it. And it was always a favorite where we went. And I think you're going to enjoy it. I want you to listen to the Antonin family sing the Glory Land medley. Then we'll be back with the devotion. So stay with us.
right, I hope you enjoyed that great song by the Antonio family. We're going to hear more from them in just a little bit after our devotion. So we'll have the Antones back to back tonight uh, on this program today. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the program, we're talking about convergence. You know, the uh, scriptures reveal certain things that would take place prior to the rapture of the church when Jesus comes to get his own. And uh, uh, Jesus, now, he does not reveal the date or the time or any, any information on exactly when he will return. Uh, now, the scripture is clear where it says in there that Jesus nor the angels know of that date or that hour. Only God, his heavenly Father, knows. And so th they don't know anything about it except for God himself. And uh, it's interesting to note that, uh, you know, we, we've, as Christians, we've been waiting a long time for something like this, for this time for Jesus to come. But you know what? Uh, I look at it that no matter how you think about it, e even myself, when I was brought up when I was young, I would hear it from my uh, grandparents. I would hear it from my family. And as they would talk about it, and they would always say, well, the Lord's coming soon. Well, you know what? The Lord may be coming soon, but I tell you, the thing that's interesting about it is when I was young, that would have been 50, at least 50 years ago or more. And think of all what has happened in 50 years since that time, in 50 years. And uh, we think about that and uh, the return of Jesus that now looks like it's probably closer than it's ever, ever been. Um, I believe that we are the generation that will see Jesus. If you're alive right now and the Lord tarries to keep you alive uh, without any sickness, you don't pass away, I truly believe we are going to be the group that's going to see Jesus split the eastern sky. And, uh, you know, but all of us have been wondering about this. And I think, I would think that the, the angels and the, or the, not the angels, but the, at least the disciples or our parents or great-grandparents or pay, people that go all the way back into the church and uh, the early days of the church would envy us right now to be in the situation we're in because we're seeing all those things happen of uh, signs of the times. And uh, so we often, t still today, ask that question. Well, when is the Lord coming? And, or what, is that, what are the signs? The signs are the important thing because Jesus gives them to us so we can kind of tell that we are getting close to the end. And uh, we talk about that in many ways. Well, you know what? The disciples asked the very same thing. They were just as inquisitive as probably we are today to know when Jesus is going to come. You know, in Mark uh, 24, we, we read the uh, 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 exceptional part about where the disciples privately talked with Jesus. And uh, in fact, let's look at this. I want to read this for you. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. They said, tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming in the end of age? Verse 4, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. Verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but, at, but the end is still to come. In verse 7 he says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Well, you know, he, he sides it up against how a pregnant woman would feel getting ready to deliver her baby, how those pains tend to speed up and get more intense. I believe that's what we're living in right now. We are seeing that, that the intensity of these signs are uh, just like a child growing up. Now, I'm going to 
get into this real briefly, uh, get into this quickly, and I want you to listen because these are some of the things that we talked about right here when we talked about all these different things where Jesus says about wars and so on. But there's much more. Uh, I think about our world uh, is, uh, is facing a really, truly falling economy. It's not just in, here in the United States or in North America, but around the globe. The economy is starting to fall. In fact, today, this Thursday, today is Thursday, um, the United States government uh, is at the point where if they don't make a decision on the debt ceiling, we could default on our debts, part of the United States. We now have a uh, $31.4 trillion in debt in the United States. And our income to make up for that through taxes and through other things doesn't even really come close. And every year, our, uh, our Congress raise, has to raise the, the debt ceiling. And uh, uh, it, it's damaging to us. It hurts in a lot of ways because that's the way people, it affects our economy, it affects our, our jobs, our uh, incomes, our savings, interest rates tend to go up. So there's a lot of things that will happen as a result of this. Well, this is happening all over the world. There is possibly going to be a recession this year of 2023. Now, I don't have, I follow a lot of different uh, economists, and they have been more worried about 2023 than any other year. So there is something to think about in that. Then we think about food prices and the possibility of famine. Did you know that, the, that most people in the world today are living off the prices of food from 2022, last year? The farmed uh, food things that we get are based on last year's. Our farmlands are also being bought by many foreign nations. Uh, here in the United States, it is common. In fact, Oklahoma, where we are located right here, we have many nations, uh, foreign nations, that are buying up our uh, farm lands. And even the Microsoft uh, founder, Bill Gates, for some reason, he is buying up farmland. Uh, I can make an estimation, a guess why he probably is, but he right now is considered the largest owner of farmland in the United States. He, own, he owns about, uh, I think it's like 310,000 acres of land, and he's, and he's not holding back. He's still buying. And uh, so our beef and chicken prices, uh, meats, and all the, all the things that we have for farming, the prices for those different things to farm them, whether it's fertilizer and seed and so on, is going to go up. A lot of our farmers are selling out. They are selling and getting out of the business, and uh, so this hurt. Prices are going to go up. So we're going to see a lot of things that uh, are going to happen. We also think about the fuel cut prices and how they are always ever increasing. And then we think about uh, the recent weather that's been going on here. I'll tell you, just of recently, I mean, here in Oklahoma uh, in, in January, we had uh, record temperatures set. We never have been that low in a long, 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 long time. And it was 30 below zero uh, in, in wind chill. We had 20 degree uh, below zero temperatures and uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, so it was very, but now the weather is affecting the West Coast. It's coming in one after the another, troughs of heavy rain and moisture. And then the mountains, it's calling, causing snow. And if you've watched this past week, you saw in the news where uh, Northern California and parts of Nevada, where the Sierras are in the mountains, they are backed up in snow. People are stuck in snow. They can't move. They can't get out. There is flooding in some areas of the country. These are all some of the climate. Then we think about the tornadoes that hit Alabama last week. Uh, very unusual. And uh, here in Oklahoma, our tornado season won't start till probably March or April, and we'll go through till at least June. So I'm kind of worried about what we're going to face this year. But climate, uh, things are going on. We're seeing odd, extreme weather. And then we think about uh, earthquakes. We think about uh, the different things that are happening around the world. 
Uh, it's just getting more and more uh, extreme. Another thing we always think about is lawlessness. What's happening? I watched on TV the other day, they were talking about all these different uh, stores where young kids would rush in and bash the counters and steal the jewelry or steal food, even young children taking that out. There's rioting going on in Brazil and Iran and different parts of the world where there's a complete loss, lawlessness that's happening that's taking grip of our world. So it's get, that's getting more extreme. Then we think of the wars. What's going on? Russia and Ukraine. We've almost been in this for a year with them, and it's still going on. And just this past week, the terrible uh, missiles that hit uh, from Russia into Ukraine and killed so many people and damaged so much property. This is happening. We think about we think about China and Taiwan and how they're uh, really uh, upping the the stakes a little bit more. That uh, they want to take over Taiwan. This in itself, the United States has said, well, if you do that, we will go to war. We will defend Taiwan while we're trying to defend Ukraine. Can the United States do it? I don't know. But we are getting close to our World War III if, we, if this all happens. So it's getting very, very dangerous. And then like we read in the scripture here about a falling away, listening to people that we shouldn't be listening to, false preachers, a false messiah that will come on the scene. These are some of the things that we are seeing. We're seeing a lot of churches uh, following certain people that they shouldn't be following, that, have, that are not teaching the word of God as it should be. And so they are being deceived. And this is one of the key things that we read here in the scripture today where God tells us to beware of that. Beware of deceitful leaders especially in the church. It is prevalent in the church today. Our government has also become very untrustworthy. <laughs> Here in the United States, we are going through uh, one of the most weirdest situations ever uh, in the president of our country, the uh, different people that are leaders. Uh, there are untrustworthy, trustworthy situations going on right now that is, is also concerning. Another thing, we were talking about the economy a little bit. This is one thing that we can look at right now, and that is the formation of the central bank digital currency that is currently being worked on, not only here in the United States. We hope the United States is supposed to have theirs ready by December. It didn't now. It's been pushed off to either March or April of this year. And uh, there are over 100 countries that are already uh, developing a digital currency. It will, in other words, it will, there will no, never be any more cash. We'll never use a dollar. We'll never use change. We will somehow be given something that will allow us to use it digitally. And the reason why this is so popular is because the world governments are wanting to be able to keep track of what we spend, how we spend it, how much we're spending. If we're going to buy a, a gas car or if we're going to buy an electric car, they may have a great say on what we do. If we're, uh, like all of us Native people, are love to eat and we just pick out the food that we want to go eat, that may come to an end uh, because they are looking at ways that if it's unhealthy to you, you may, your money may not be able to buy that. They will know everything about us through this digital currency. That's why they want it. But in order for this digital currency, at least here in the United States, to take place, the market, the cash, cash society will have to crash. The, eco the economic society will have to crash so this will be able to be used. So this is coming and is being developed by many countries right now. And many countries, I think there's around 40 that have already switched and are using a digital currency. But someday, for the mark of the beast, I believe this is what's heading up for it in the tribulation period, long after we're gone, after the rapture has taken place. I believe that what we're seeing now, this digital currency, is basically prepping us for that time in the tribulation. 
I don't want to be here. I hope you're not there either. But because I know Christ, I will miss that. But to think that they're already preparing that right now and is moving at uh, unbelievable speeds to develop this. So uh, we see this. We've, we are facing a collapse of our government, of our financial institutions, of the paper dollar, and the growth uh, of anti-Christian beliefs, and even people who are really against Christians. We are being in, a, in, a, in the world now. There is uh, much persecution against Christians. Uh, so we are seeing that more and more. This world is changing. And I believe 2023 is going to be the year that we're going to see uh, the change. One of the things that is going on also this week, and in fact, it's going on right now, it started on Monday, is the World Economic Forum. For those of you that have followed us, we've talked about this many times in our Prophecy News update telecast that we do. In fact, we'll have another one next week. And I won't tell you the date, but it's going to be on next week, in addition to our regular programming. But the, the WEF, under the leader of Klaus Schwab, the chairman, is bring, has brought in all these leaders uh, and heads of state from all over the world. We even have our FBI uh, uh, director. Uh, he's going to be there from the FBI. We have a lot of officials from Canada, a lot of United States officials. We have all sorts of leaders from the, the owners of Amazon and uh, Pfizer and other big corporations are at this event right now. They are deciding how our future is going to be. They're not elected, but they are people who believe the same thing, that our world will be a better off place if they control it if they have control of the world. And part of that is the financial. Part of it will be uh, the, um, uh, the government, how our governments are run. And then thirdly, I will b believe that it will be a challenge because we're going to see Christianity drop and other religions like the Muslim religion and others come to the forefront. And we're going to see that with increasing uh, unbelief. And what we're seeing going on in Israel right now, I forgot to mention that in the war section, the rumors of war. Uh, Israel is being, uh, is under uh, a new leadership, which is a right side leadership. So uh, they uh, are really being hit by everybody, including uh, the, uh, uh, the National Security Council. The world body is against uh, Israel and what they're doing. And they're looking at uh, one of their leaders visited the Temple Mount, just walked up there uh, about two weeks ago, and it caused all sorts of problems. And so what we're seeing is this situation that we're going to have uh, terrible wars and, and uh, things that are going on in the Far East. And I encourage you to watch the news on what's happening in Israel because that is going to be our key now from here on out. These other things are happening in the world, but we're going to see things happen in uh, Israel, in the, far, uh, in the Middle East, of what's happening that will definitely show that we are heading into the tribulation period. And friend, I believe we're just around the corner. These days are short the convergence of all these things I've just mentioned are all happening at once, and they're getting faster. That dollar is going to disappear. We're going to see our economy crash. We're going to see uh, famine. We're going to see food prices increase. We're going to see our fuel increase. We're going to have things that will happen to us. People are going to lose jobs. It's going to be a difficult year, I believe, 2023. And if the Lord allows us through to make it this year— and I believe he may just take us out before this really happens because I believe the tribulation period is just around the corner. I believe it's coming. Are you ready? Do you know Christ is your personal Savior? This is what is the most important thing we can do right now 
is to be ready for Christ. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, it's as simple as, as actually asking him, admitting that you're a sinner, telling him, Father, I'm a sinner, and I want your grace. Jesus will come into your heart. Just believe. Believe on him. Believe that he went to the cross, died for us on the cross. Through his precious blood, he allows the cleanse us. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. And today he lives. He made that promise when he was on the cross that he would rise again, and he did. Now we look for his coming, and we know his coming is very soon. And because he said, I would rise again, and he did, when he says, I'm coming again, I know he is. Friends, I hope you're ready. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, trust him today. Invite him into your heart. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. And plan on an eternity, no matter what happens here on earth, but plan on an eternity in heaven with Jesus. It's going to be a glorious time. And I believe that moment when Jesus comes could be at any moment. I believe we're standing at that clock is right at the midnight hour. And I want you to listen to our family sing this song. And it simply says, the midnight hour. Listen to it. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you this week. We love you. Plan to join us next week at the same time for more of Living Hope Today. I knew the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Oh, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. I see prophecies fulfilling Oh, and signs of the times They're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father Hey, son, go get your children. And at the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise.
the midnight cry. At the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again. And then goes that remain. Oh, we'll be quickly changed. At the midnight Oh.